welcome to, I think this is the fourth edition of Maths Not Live. Um, as you know, I'm doing this because I've not been so well over the last few days and I'd rather have a lesson that um, I can do. So if I make a mistake, I can stop. Whereas when it's live, it's live. Um, so yeah, I really want to do this lesson because it's, it's, it's very, very much related to ratio and it's quite important when you go into year six and into key stage three. So let's see how we get on today. Um, I want to shout out to all you lovely children that take part every week in, week out, even if you, and especially if you're new. So thank you for joining in. Today we're going to be learning about proportion. Proportion is very, very closely linked to ratio. Just like we have area and perimeter that are very closely linked. So for example, if you can find the area of a rectangle, you can find the perimeter. Um, ratio and proportion are even more interlinked and I'm going to show you how today. Um, I just want to make it clear that um, you don't actually have to necessarily know the difference. Obviously with area and perimeter, you know that you need to multiply to find area and you need to add to find the perimeter where you don't actually have to know the difference between ratio and portion. But I'm going to show you how they can be laid out differently. So, recapping from yesterday. Here's one of the challenge questions that I put up today. So, ratio is uh, comparing two parts that are given. So I might say, what is the ratio of yellow blocks to blue blocks? So you would look at each separate part and there's th every three yellow blocks, there are two blue blocks. Now I was asked a really, really good question by Summer. So thank you for this question, Summer. Summer asked, why do I use a colon to separate numbers instead of no, num no uh, bit of punctuation at all? Why not a comma? Why you use a colon? is to show that the numbers are separate, but they're really, really important and they're interlinked. So it shows us that there's three parts to two parts and you, you need both of it to balance the ratio. Um, and if you wanted to change the ratio to make it twice as big or three times as big, you would keep the same amount. So if you wanted to double this amount, it would become six to four, but it's still balanced on each side. Um, another w way that we use colons in maths and in everyday life is time. So for example, if I had 10.30, we use a colon and it's breaking up, showing that this is the 10th hour, this is the 30th minute, but we need them both. So the colon makes it clear that they're separate, but we need them. If you use the comma, why can we not use a comma? because commas are used in uh, coordinates. So it, that's already got its special place in maths. So that's a really, really good, good question. Uh, if you do it the other way around, you might say, what is the ratio of blue cubes to yellow cubes? So it would be two, two, three. Whichever one I say first has to come first. For this one, I might say, how, what is the ratio of red cubes to blue cubes. So therefore, you all have a go at this. So there's two red cubes and there's one, two, three, four blue cubes. Now, this is where proportion is different. Ratio has each part set side by side. Proportion is when you take one amount and think of it out of the total amount. So if you have a proportion of um, a bit of pizza, it's how much of that pizza you have taken from the whole part. And we already know those as fractions. So I might be asked what proportion of the cubes are blue? So there are two blue cubes out of a total of five. Same with the yellow ones. You might be asked what is the what proportion of the cubes are yellow? three out of the five. So with this one, you might be asked what proportion of all the rectangles are blue? So there's four blue rectangles out of a total of six. So the proportion of blue rectangles is four out of six. So when you're looking at cubes or color blocks or whatever, that's the difference ratio puts them side by side, compares them, whereas proportion selects apart. So, gonna give you another go. So, say I had 
I think I'll need some new pens after all this colouring this week. <laughs> right, so I might ask what proportion, what proportion of the circles are red? What proportion are red? So there's one red circle out of a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. What proportion of purple? What proportion of these circles are purple? So you count how many there are. Three. How many are there in total? Six. So three out of the six circles are purple. And as you know with fractions, you can simplify them. Three out of six is also known as a half. And if you spot that, half of all the circles are purple. So you can simplify it. Right, your turn now. So I'm going to draw another set and I'd like you to tell me what proportion is given. I'm going to mix them up a little bit. Lots and lots of different colours. So I'd like you to tell me what proportion of the circles are green. What proportion of the circles are green? So have a look, spot how many green are, and think how many in total, how many of those circles have I selected that are green from the total amount? So there's two green ones out of a total of six again. So two out of the six, you can, if you spot, you can simplify that to one third. Don't worry about that, that's not as important. It's understanding how to select the proportion. Good, well done. Now, as you know from when we did ratio, ratio is not just about um, colours and shapes. Ratio uh, we use in real life. So for example, we were talking about, use ratio when you're doing cooking. So imagine if you make a cake and the cake is for three people. And for that cake, you need uh, I don't know, 100 grams of flour and you need two eggs. Obviously, you need other ingredients, but I'm just selecting those two. So for three people, you need 100 grams of flour and two eggs. If you are making the cake for six people, to make three into six, you double it. Therefore, you would need to double the amount of ingredients you would need. So rather than 100 grams, you'd need 200 grams of flour and you'd need four eggs. That is ratio because the two amounts are very, are very, very important to each other and they need to stay balanced. So as you can see, 100 for every 100 grams is two, therefore for uh, every 200 grams it would be four. If you halved 100 to make it 50, that would be one egg. So that is ratio. Now, just going back to that, so if it was for three people, and it was 100 grams and two eggs, okay? What would happen if you needed a cake for five people? What would happen? Because as you can see, you can't, you, we doubled it to make it to six people. You could triple it to make it to nine people. You could divide it by three to make it to one person, but you can't simply make it into five. This is proportion. It's proportion because you need to take a sample out of the ratio, change it, and then put it back. And I'll show you how. So we want a cake for five people. I'm going to remind myself there. This is what you do. Let's go back and find out how many, how much ingredients we need for one person. How do we do that? If this is for three people, we want it for one person, we divide the amount by three. Okay, so 100 divided by three is 33.3, is I know that. Okay, oh, 33.3. And then two, oh, what's two divided by three? Oh, look at this, we'll have to go into decimal points here. So that's zero. So that's two, so three, so uh, five threes are 15, six threes are 18, 20, ooh, so 0 0.66. You 
you can't really get 0 0.6, so half an egg, isn't it? It's about half an egg. Right, we now know how much flour and egg we need for one person. Because we now know how much we need for one person, we can now times it five, uh, five. Well, I'm going back to people now, aren't I? We can now times it by five to get it to five people. So you shrunk it to one and now you're going back up to five. So you do 33.3 times by five. Five threes are 15. Five threes are 15, that comes 16. And 15, uh, that comes 16 again. So five threes are 15, 16. Five threes are 16, I'm gonna check that. So 166, two, and then we need 0 0.66 times by five. Six fives are 30. Six fives are 30, so that's 33. And none of fives are nothing plus the three. So it's 3.3. 3. That is proportion. I'm going to show you a few different examples. So, for example, uh, it's five cinema tickets cost £37.50. So the ratio is five is £37.50. So if we wanted 10 tickets, we would just double the amount. If we wanted 15 tickets, we would triple the amount. If we wanted one ticket, we'd divide by five. That's okay because we're just keeping the same amount each time. But what if I wanted three tickets? What if I wanted three cinema tickets? Because I can't multiply or divide five to make it into three. So I do what I did before, I make it into one. So one cinema ticket. And to do that, I need to divide five by five to make it into one. So I need to do the same to this side. 37 pound 50 divided by five. Five sevens are 35, 36, 37, and then five fives are 25. So it's five pound 50. One ticket costs five pound 50. Now I've got that information. I can now find out how much, what, how many, what was it? Oh, was it three tickets? That was it, three tickets. And to make it into three tickets, I times it by three. So I do the same here. So no threes are nothing. Five threes are 15. And then five threes are 15 again. But I make it, I carry the one, make it into 16. So it's 16 pound 50. So three tickets cost 16 pounds 50. So I've taken the five made it into one and times it by three again to make the quantity, the amount that we need. Right, I'm gonna give you a go now. Now obviously, when we're doing this live, I'll put a question up and I'll say, right, I'll give you some time and I'll do some shout outs. But obviously, I've got no one to shout out to at the moment. There's no one actually behind the camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'll do the, write the question down and I'll say, if you want to have a go, pause the video, have a go, and then just play it when you're ready. If I put the question up and you're really not sure what to do, you can just simply watch or even skip, uh, or even make notes as they go along. So, eight ice creams, eight ice creams cost 20 pounds. So eight ice creams cost 20 pounds. And I would like to know how much seven ice creams cost. How much do seven ice creams cost? So again, we can't make eight and seven. So what we'll do is we'll make it into one. Okay. To do that, I'll divide eight by eight to make it into one. Therefore, I'll divide 20 by eight to find out how much one ice cream costs. 
So you can't put it in there. So one eight is eight, two eights are 16. That remainder four, and five eights are 40. So one ice cream costs two pounds 50. Two pounds 50. Now I know that one ice cream costs £2.50, I can find out how much seven ice creams cost because I've got my one, so I just times it by seven. And then times £2.50 by seven. So no sevens are nothing. Five sevens are 35. Two sevens are 14. 15, 16, 17. So therefore, seven ice creams cost £17.50. Well done if you gave that a go. Try another question. Actually, what we'll do is we'll go to the challenge question that I said. So I told you that proportion is also described as an equality of ratios. And I showed you the example of a football ticket. So if one football ticket costs £5.50, all you need to do to find three tickets is times both sides by three. The, other, the example I gave was if two pizzas... I'm just putting straight into the ratio. If two pizzas cost £17, how much would five cost? So how much would five pizzas cost? If you want to have a go at this, press pause now. If you don't want to have a go and you just want to watch, that's fine. Right, we can't multiply two or anything to make it into five. So let's go back to one as we've been doing. So let's find out how much one cost. So we divide it by 2. 17 divided by 2. Oh, how do you find half of an odd number? Here's a quick trick if you didn't already know. Half of 17, what you should do is go a number back, which is 16, divide that by 2, which is 8, and then just add a 0.5 on the end. So for any odd number, so if you want to find half of 19, go back one number, which is 18, Divide that by 2, which is 9, and then add the 0.5 on the end. There's a little trick for you. So 1 is 8.5. Oops, drop my pen. Oh, that was a good catch, wasn't it? Oh, could have had a pen everywhere then. But we don't want one pizza. We want five pizzas. And we can now find that out because we know how much one costs. So to make 1 into 5, we times that by 5. And do the same to this side. So 5 fives are 25, 8 fives are 40, 41, 42. So it's 42 pounds 50. That's how much five pizzas cost. So check that. So just make that a bit clever. 5 fives is 25. 8, 5 to 40, 41, 42. And you just put the zero on to make it into the number. So well done if you had a go at that. Try another one. We'll keep practising. This one we'll do with measure now, with weight. If peanuts, if a pack of 100 grams of peanuts cost 60 pence, how much would 350 grams cost? I'm going to make that... How much would 350 grams cost? Trickier this one, because we've got the 50 there. If it was if any multiple of 100, we'd be fine. We'd just go to 200 or 300, 400. But we've got a 50. If you want to have a go at this, again, pause. If not, I'll show you what to do. So we want to get to 350. So we'll remember that. Right, so I actually want... I can't just go to 300 and I can't go to 400. So I'm going to take 100 and I'm going to make it into 50. Because if I make it into 50, I can then times 50 by a certain number to make it into 350. So I'm going to find out how much 50 grams cost. I do that by halving 100. So there we go. So half of 60 is 30. Now that I know how much 50 grams cost, I can find 350. Because if I use my five times table, 
5 times by 7 is 35, and then there's just the two zeros added on. So 5 times that by 7, 3 times 7 is 21, put the zero on. So 350 grams of peanuts cost 210 pence, otherwise now known as £2.10 pence. Right, one more question I want to show you. And I want to show you this one because I want to make it clear you don't always have to go back to one if there's a more, a quicker way of doing it. Flapjacks. I'm making flapjacks, I'm making honey flapjacks. And for every 18 flapjacks I made so this recipe, I used 240 grams of flapjacks, of um, oats. 240 grams of oats makes 18 flapjacks. But I want to make 24 flapjacks. So I need to know how many oats I need. So, now with this one, you could take 18 right back to one, then times it by 24. But if you look at the numbers, can you spot the highest factor of 18 and 24? Now, they're both even numbers. So they're both in the two times table. So you could take 18 to 2 and then take it back up to 24 by times it by 12. They're both in the 3 times table, so you could divide 18 by 3 and then times it up by 24. But if you notice, 18 and 24 are both in the 6 times table. They're both in the 6 times table. So what I can do is make 18 into 6 and then make it up again to make it into 24. If you want to have a go at this, again, pause it, and then pray if you just want to watch, that's fine. So I'm gonna make 18 into six. How many 18s, how many sixes are in 18? So one, six, six, two, six, 12, three sixes are 18. So I'm gonna divide 240 by three. So, 1, 3 is 3, 2, 3 is 6, 3, 3 is 9, 4, 3 is 12, 5, 3 is 15, 6, 3 is 18, 7, 3 is 21, 8, 3 is 24. So that's 80. 80 grams. Now, because I've got 6, I can make 6 into 24. Because 4 times 6 is 24. So I'll do the same to this side. So 80 times 4, right, or well 4 times 8 is 32. And then add my zero. So that's 320 grams. So rather than just going straight back to 1, I've spotted that I can use my 6 times table to make the jump from 18 to 24. Okay, it is tricky, like I say. Ratio proportion is taught sometimes in year six if it can be squeezed into the curriculum, but it'll definitely be in key stage three. So as long as you just try and use the method, that's absolutely fine. And I want to reiterate that you don't necessarily have a ratio question and a proportion question, because as you can see, we've got ratio here, and then we've used proportion to find the answer. Um, this lesson will be uploaded at about one o'clock or 1.30. Very soon after, I will put the challenge question up on the page as well, so you can have a go. Friday, I was never actually going to do a live lesson because I'm not at home on Friday. Um, but I will pre-record another lesson to just do some more challenge questions on ratio and proportion, and just trying to keep up the understanding of it. Um, but I will be back live next week. I'll tell you more about that in uh, tomorrow's video. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a lovely, sunny, warm day besides that. Um, see you later. Bye-bye.